Good evening and thanks for joining us. It is one of the most disgusting, brutal parts of NHL hockey. And last night, Canadians watched it all happen yet again. On opening night of the season, an ugly fight broke out in the game between the Leafs and the Canadians. Two huge players punched each other's lights out. One guy's hit the head, hit the ice like a hammer. He had to be taken off on a stretcher. As a parent, I was left trying to explain to my young son why it's okay for grown men to beat each other up on the ice when off the ice they'd be charged with assault. It seems absurd, so why doesn't it change? Mike Lecatur reports on the fight and the fallout. Perros tried to go to into a fight after the hit on Pacioretty in the first period. Their first fight brought the fans to their feet. But the second bout between George Paros and Colton Orr the left the crowd in, in like stunned words. silence. Paros misses a punch, and the six foot five, 224 pounder lands square on his chin, knocking him out cold. It all seems wildly entertaining until, until something somebody. like this happens. Paros suffered a concussion and spent the night in hospital. He's recovering at home, but can the game itself recover from this? So when's the violence going to stop? Former hockey enforcer Jim Thompson says a player should be ejected for fighting. If not, he's worried parents and children will turn away from our national sport. Kids are quitting. They're tired of getting, you know, punched in the head. They're tired of the violence. And we need to look at the grassroots, how the violence in the NHL is affecting parents pulling their kids out of hockey. Around the league, players are calling it an accident and are fighting any notion of a ban. I'm an advocate of, of keeping fighting in the game. I think there's a place for it if done properly. I think um, it's a good way to police the game. We police ourselves out there and uh, I, I think that's a, a good way to have it. A standard refrain from players, Neil would likely be out of a job if the league banned fighting. In 779 career NHL games, he's piled up more than 2,500 penalty minutes and fewer than 100 goals. That is going to be a... Now a new rule this season forces players to keep their helmets on during a fight. It was quickly ignored by these two in the season's first game. So what will it take? Derek Bugard and Bob Probert both died with brain diseases from blows to the head, yet nothing changed. And some fans worry it'll take something even more extreme on the ice. Probably like a broken neck or you know, you see someone in a, maybe a wheelchair as a result of a hockey fight. But until that happens, it seems the old joke will remain. I went to a boxing match last night and a hockey game broke out. Mike LeCouture, Global News, Ottawa. So where does the league stand on fighting? It calls the injury to George Peros an unfortunate accident and says there's no appetite in the league to change the rules on fighting. The commissioner, Gary Bettman, the man who has the power to lead the charge against it, has said he supports it. We tried to contact Bettman today. We've heard nothing back. But here's what he said last year about fighting in hockey. There's a concern that without fighting, which is really only a very small part of the game, it gets entirely too much attention, there'd be a lot more stick work and other things. It, it kind of keeps the game honest. Keeps the game honest. A fan did get a shot of Bettman last night at the game in Chicago. Apparently, he dozed off. It's going to be a long season. Do you think the NHL should change the rules on fighting? You can join the debate on our website, globalnews.ca.